Welcome back. Now is our chance to tell the WPO what we think. Remember the purpose of a scientific argument is to convince people that a certain claim is the best by using strong evidence. The WPO needs strong evidence so that they are convinced they have made the right decision when they build the reserve. Here is our checklist for scientific arguments. Number one, it answers a question with a claim about the natural world. Number two, it includes evidence to support the claim. And number three, it uses scientific language. Before talking about scientific language, let's look back to chapter one when we had an argument that we made about heavy coats. Here's a new example argument that includes more evidence to support the claim. The question on the left says, in which city would you need a heavy coat, Newburgh or Oldburg? And the claim is you would need a heavy coat in Oldburg. The evidence shows that heavy coats are good for the coldest weather. The evidence shows that someone measured the temperature in Newburgh every day for a month. The range was 40 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. The evidence also shows that someone measured the temperature in Oldburg every day for a month. The range was 32 to 52 degrees Fahrenheit. This means that Oldburg is colder than Newburgh. So the argument includes evidence showing that Oldburg is colder than Newburgh. That means it really truly supports the claim. When you write things like the evidence shows and this means that, those are examples of scientific language. It's also important to use scientific words such as range and temperature. Scientific language helps scientists communicate their arguments clearly. Scientific voca vocabulary is really important to make a good scientific argument. For the next few minutes, you'll pause the video and write your argument on a piece of paper. If it helps you to draw, you can also do that or to think aloud with a partner, a stuffed animal, a tree nearby, anything that works for you. Let's look at what it says here. The directions say, Write a scientific argument that answers the question. And the question, which island's weather will continue to be the most like the weather where the orangutans live? Which island do you remember choosing for which weather, where, where the weather will continue to be the most like the weather where the orangutans live? Hopefully you agree and wrote Creek. The WPO knows how to build reserves, but they're not experts on weather data or predicting weather. As experts on that topic that we now are, we will need to explain our ideas very clearly. Notice I wrote the word creek in the blank to complete the claim. The first piece of evidence collected in the chapter said, orangutans live in some of the hottest, rainiest places on earth. Let's indicate that this evidence should also be included today because it helps our reader, the WPO, understand what the orangutans need. Here is an example of scientific language. The evidence shows that orangutans live in some of the hottest, rainiest places on earth. This, scientific, this is scientific language because the sentence begins with one of the sentence frames. When you write, I'll provide some scientific language for you to include. You'll also use some strong evidence from your cards in your argument. Now you'll get some time to write your arguments. You can pause here as you start writing. Then make sure to press play so you can see more evidence cards and helpful spelling. I even started a sentence for you. Underneath the claim it says, the evidence shows that orangutans live on some of the hottest, rainiest places on earth. Just like evidence card 13. Here are three more evidence cards for you to use. These all have an example of the daily high temperatures in August for each of the three islands. Use these in your claim and remember once you're done, press play so we can finish our video. With the new evidence we have now, Creek Island seems to be the best choice for an orangutan reserve. I will send your arguments to the Wildlife Protection Organization. Stay tuned for a response. For your lesson reflection today, at the very end of chapter two, you have a couple challenges to pick from. 
or do both? The first question says, what are you still wondering about weather and climate? Do you think one month of weather data is still enough to predict what the weather in a place will be like for future months? Why or why not? Your second challenge is to draw the weather today or tomorrow where you are. You can add special details and labels just like a scientist would to a diagram. Also, just like the boy we read about in Seeing the World Through Numbers, I hope you are still keeping track of the temperature in your city every day for 30 days. If you forgot a few days, you can always look back at the recent weather. Just ask an adult or older sibling to help. Now, great job in Chapter 2, everybody. Stay tuned for Scientist Kate as she returns in Chapter 3 to guide you. Bye for now.